Welcome to Revival Time Hub, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. glorified. Jesus be glorified. Jesus be glorified. Let's celebrate what God is doing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Hallelujah. And I want you to please help me bless Pastor Ike and his wife. Give him a big, 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 big. If you were not in ministry, I would have recommended you to do politics. <laughs> Hallelujah. This man can speak. He would talk and talk and talk. And I was watching and I said, oh God. But we give Jesus the praise. Hallelujah. Please help me honor every man and every woman of God here. Give them a big, big God bless you. It takes a lot of humility and maturity for men of God to leave their busy schedules and to come to be part of this apostolic encounter and I particularly want to honor my dear friend um, Bishop Jude God bless you such an honor thank you thank you so much amen it is true that when God wants to lift men he sends men it is true that when God wants to redefine our possibilities he will send men to our lives whether we are attentive to what the Spirit is saying and doing or not is a different ball game but i'm praying in the name of jesus hence you have come that the grace to hear the grace to listen the grace to understand may be released upon you in the name of jesus do you believe in prayer can we pray for a few minutes let your prayer tonight be a simple cry father do in me whatever it would take to position me for the next level in the spirit go ahead and pray do in me everything the pruning the building the transformation illumination someone prays habalako shapra tegebele getas shadebele dekete branda gabalato sabrestebele from the front to the back the left to the right connecting online go ahead and pray go ahead and pray the bible says for everyone that asketh receiveth you are a man of God, pray. Businessman, pray. Anoint my everything. Use my everything. I release my everything You have my everything Take all of me All of me, Lord You have my everything Take all of me All of me, Lord You have my everything Are you praying? You have my everything You have my everything you have my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Anoint my everything. Use my everything. I release my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me. All of me, you have my everything. Use all of me, all of me, you have my everything. Prune my everything, rebuild my everything, remake my everything, use my everything, take all of me. All of me, Lord, you have my everything. Take all of me, 
all of me Lord we're still praying just a minute to pray let it be a cry from your heart you came for an encounter tonight tonight you find the people ready to receive we pray tonight that you will find the people yielded ready to receive ready to learn we strip ourselves of every pride we strip ourselves of every vain glory and father we cry that tonight let only one person be seen in this place Jesus even the son of the living God that only one person be exalted in this place Jesus even the son of the living God Lord we stand and we hide behind the cross and we cry O oh God that as your people set their gaze upon this preacher may they see Jesus may they see Jesus in his power in his wisdom in his grace and to you be all the glory for in Jesus name we pray God bless you please be seated God bless you and you may be seated yesterday I didn't have um, the opportunity to follow um, Dr. Obwele's session I wanted to just follow to hear what he was saying so that we just connect from there but I was in Lagos so I was able to pick a few things I think later on just try to go through it and I was very very touched by the perspectives that he brought yesterday and I just thought it was it was something that God had put in my heart and so when he began to talk about these things yesterday I was very touched and I thought to just build from there um, because it's important that we understand God's emphasis in these last days. Please lend me your attention. It is important, very, very important, very important. Please bring two people that shout right now, very loud under the anointing. I just saw a cloud of his glory. And for someone, the Lord is saying he's bringing you into a new prophetic season. Just... Help them, please. Help them, please. Whether you're an usher or not, you just hold them. This is a ministry of the Spirit. When God does these things, it is because He's responding to the hunger of His people. I want you to be sensitive as we teach. This is why you came. Ay, 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 ay. Glory be to God. Hi, 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 hi. Glory be to God. Hi, 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 hi. Glory be to God. Hi, 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 hi. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Ay, 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 ay. Glory be to God. Ay, 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 ay. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You see, 
what happens when you are in the presence of God is that you are immersed in the cloud of his presence and as you listen it is more than an information that is coming to you the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit he says and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty then he says we all so it's an experience for everyone with faces unveiled beholding him as in a mirror he says we are changed changed we are changed this is what the Bible says we are changed Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 1 he says son of man stand upon your feet and I will speak unto you and he had no strength to arise verse 2 says and the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me Jesus was speaking and he says the words that I speak unto you it is beyond a lecture is beyond a man just speaking English when you come from the presence you also come with his presence and when you speak he says the words that I speak they are spirit and they are life that means beyond the things that the preacher is saying the essence of his communication from the depth of the spirit there is a spirit to spirit communication while you are listening to me there are things you will hear beyond what i am saying because it's not just your ears hearing it there is a spirit communication there is a spirit communication and so i want you to be very very attentive wherever we stop tonight we'll pray don't be distracted his word is powerful it comes to build us now god always has his emphasis in every season please listen god is not doing the same thing in all seasons and there are three levels of the anointing that is available in this side of god's kingdom the first dimension of the anointing is that which comes in the life of a believer by reason of being grafted into christ the bible calls it the anointing that is within hallelujah that is the anointing that is responsible for conformity the inner workings of the spirit that produces the character of the christ in the believer there is the second level of the anointing that comes upon a believer strengthening you to be a witness hallelujah he says tarry ye in jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high but there is a third level of the anointing that does not come just because you are a believer it does not just come just because you occupy an office it comes by reason of your understanding and aligning with what god is doing now so it is possible that you can be a man of god it is possible you can be a businessman and carry the anointing that is upon a believer by reason of our union with christ carry the anointing that is upon you by reason of your office and yet you will find out that you are very ineffective when you enter a certain season because of the inability to discern and align with what god is doing it says and of the sons of issachar there were men who had understanding of the times to know what israel ought to do so in every season god has his emphasis and there is a threefold emphasis please listen with all due respect if you're a man of god here i want you to hear me if you want to be relevant in the days that are coming your ministry must be pegged around these three things this is what god is doing now number one the first emphasis of the spirit is world evangelization this is what god is doing right now a campaign to see that as many as possible come into the experience of salvation he desires that all men be saved he desires that all men be saved that means whoever becomes part of this global missions this world evangelization campaign you can be sure that you have the backing the support of the spirit number two the second emphasis of the spirit in this season is the maturity of the saints 
The Bible says an heir for as long as that heir is a child, he differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all. Before now, there is a lot of recycling of very inferior levels of light in the church. So believers are not methodically mentored to attain stature and maturity in the spirit. The average believer is very ignorant as far as the business of spiritual understanding and maturity is concerned. So we are around church. We do a lot of church activities, but most believers are not sound in doctrine. They are not grounded. The average believer cannot stand in defense of his spiritual understanding. What do you know about God? What do you know about prayer? What do you know about Satan? What do you know about victory? What do you know about defeat? What do you know about the realm of the spirit? What do you know about God's program? What do you know about his economic system? What do you know about the cosmos? It is this understanding that gives you stature and a standing in life. So most believers, the average believer just has gaps of spiritual information, either learned from church or perhaps following a man of God or some teaching. So we have many disconnected truths that are not synergized to produce stability. One of the things that the Spirit of God is doing, he's rearranging our understanding. He's bringing us to a level of accuracy. There is a formula, and this is what I'm going to be teaching on. There is an apostolic model for the growth of the believer. The believer was never designed to grow by chance. The believer was not supposed to freelance your pathway to growth. There is a predefined pathway. Are we together? We produce doctors today because we invented predictable pathways. So anybody who subscribes to that pathway, at the end of six, seven years, you can call that person a medical doctor, an engineer. You imagine some of the people we celebrate today once upon a time they were naive people with only a passion to become what they are now and the ability to have evolved was because they submitted themselves through a methodical system are we together most believers learn just by will by passion if you are fortunate to find it in a conference happy for you if you are fortunate to find it with your pastor happy for you if you're fortunate to find it in a book happy for you if you're fortunate to find it online you stumble across a message and it seems to shed more light and take you out of a level of ignorance happy for you the church cannot be powerful that way there has to be a defined pathway and this is one of the things that i'll be showing us so number one world evangelization number two the maturity of the saints and to achieve this purpose God is not really concerned about the saints. He's concerned about the ministerial gifts because they are the ones equipped to prepare the saints. Nobody will be able to raise a people higher than his realm of spiritual understanding. Are we together now? So rather than God seeking to raise a thousand people, he would rather walk upon that one person who he has made a shepherd over the thousand people because in his maturity will be their maturity in his enlightenment will be their enlightenment everyone communicates truth from the lens of his ignorance or otherwise number three what is the third emphasis of the spirit in this season territorial transformation this is an aspect of the great commission that has been neglected for a very long time it is the reason why society has frowned at our Christian experience because we've not been able to capture God to a context that has become profitable to society. Are we together? The average Christian's experience is laced with all kinds of fanatism without an experience that reflects God to society. In Matthew chapter 5, when you begin to read from verse 13, Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. He says, and if the salt has lost its saltiness or its sever, wherewith shall it be salty again? It is good for nothing except to be thrown under foot, trampled under foot of men. Then he says, you are the light of the world. He calls us a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. He says, neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but that they put it on a candlestick and it gives light to everyone in the room. He leaves us with a mandate in verse 16. He says, permit your light to so shine 
before man, not before spirit. There is a dimension of your Christian experience that must reflect on society. So with all due respect, we have a lot of churches, a lot of conferences, a lot of conventions, a lot of crusades, and our society continues to plunge into a level of decadence. You see, because most believers have not been mentored to understand the principles of territorial transformation. The average believer only knows prayer as the tool for territorial transformation. And while that is important and foundational, that is not the only key. There are many aspects. Are we together? Yes. There are people in scripture that the Bible calls they which turn the world upside down. Their territories felt the impact of their godliness. So these are the three emphases of the spirit. World evangelization. The maturity of the saints. God is opening, redigging ancient wells again. And bringing us to levels of superior understanding. The things that we were once at a loss about. The things that the fathers, the things that the patriarchs knew. That granted them access to power. They manifested unusual possibilities. God by his spirit, through the spirit of revelation, is bringing these experiences to the church again. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. Hallelujah. So let's go to our discussion tonight. There is an apostolic model for spiritual growth. There is an apostolic model for wholesome growth and stability. It's very important for us to understand. There is a way God designed men to know him. And there is a way God designed men to function. Let me repeat myself again. There is a way God designed that men would know him. There are many ways, many routes in the spirit. As far as your determination to know God is concerned. But there is a predefined pathway. Please listen. The believer is not at liberty to invent his pathway to knowing God. The moment you attempt to invent your way of knowing God, you will dabble into witchcraft, spiritism, and all kinds of extra-biblical practices. There are many people who sincerely began a pursuit to knowing God, but they did not know that there is a predefined pathway. The many extra-biblical variations that we have in the body of Christ today are a, ref a reflection, it's a report card that if you do not follow the path designed by God, as far as knowing him is concerned, even if you are sincere, you will stumble across many, many, many things in the spirit that is not God. Are we together? The Bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the later time, some will depart from the faith and will give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons. If you understand anything about seduction, seduction has no power over you until there is a desire in you that it can connect with. Are we together? That means if I am not hungry, the temptation over food will have no power over me. So the character of seduction is that Satan studies your desire and builds a system of deception around your desire. So if your desire is to know God, you can go to fast, you can go to pray, but not understanding that there is a way God designed men to know him. You can sincerely begin that journey and find out that you are encountering familiar spirits, encountering all kinds of things. You will return back with all kinds of revelations that are not consistent with the character of Christ. And as you begin to practice those revelations, you will find out that you are becoming something else, not Christ. Are we learning now? So it is important for us to know that the believer is not at liberty to choose how to know God. <clears throat> there is already a path. Jeremiah 6, 16. Give it to us, please. The Bible says, Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? He says, and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. There is a path already predefined, predefined by God. And tonight I want to show you that path in the name of Jesus Christ. 
when Jesus called the disciples who would later become apostles of the Lamb, he subjected them to a model, a template. There was a way he raised them. There was a way he made them to evolve from fishermen to apostles. They did not just become apostles just because they exhausted their time with Jesus. They were submitted methodically to a spiritual system. The early church from Acts chapter 2 began to evolve and grow until they had mighty men within the church community by following the same pathway. And I submit to you by the integrity of scripture that any person, any church, any environment, any territory that goes back to that apostolic template must become a people of power, must become a people of grace. If that is you, shout a loud amen. So number one, there is a way God designed men to know him. There is a way God designed men to function. The second thought that I want you to have tonight is that there is a model, there is a template that the early church used in building believers. There is a model, there is a template that the early church used in building believers. It would be such a risk for Jesus to leave them to their creativity. Choose how to raise the people. No. They were given an exact blueprint and they used it to the latter and they raised mighty men out of sinners. If this model is followed, the truth is that it will turn anyone to an object of wonder. The idea that God just decided to select a few people and manifest his glory and power in their life is not scriptural. It is true that there are people by reason of the election of grace. Are we together? Have been apportioned certain superior dimensions in the spirit for the sake of God's program. But I want you to know, and this is the next point, that the believer has a destiny in Christ. Please follow my teaching carefully. Are we together? If we're together, say amen. I need to know that everyone is following. There is a destiny that the believer has in Christ. And I want to reveal it to you. The believer's destiny in Christ. Listen to me. The end product of all that God is doing in and through you is glory. The end product. I need to tell you this. When you begin to walk with God, the end product, what God has in mind, by the time he begins to walk with any man, is that his glory be manifested through that person are we together god's ultimate desire for every believer as far as your prophetic destiny is concerned is that eventually your life becomes a manifestation of the glory of god write that statement down that your life this is this is your creed this is the destination your faith adventure why the prayer why the fasting why the word study? Why going to church on Sunday? I'm revealing to you that behind every spiritual activity, this is what God has at the back of his mind. That my life and your life becomes in experience a manifestation of the glory of God. Say my life. Please shout it. Say my life must become a manifestation of the glory of God. One more time, say, my life must become a manifestation of the glory of God. You know what the glory of God is? The word glory comes from the Hebrew word kabod. The Greek is doxa. It means the weightiness is an attempt to measure the value of a thing. So when you talk about the glory of a thing, you have to examine all the features that makes that thing expensive or makes that thing desirable. Are we together now? Yes. If I hold your phone right now, if you're using a latest phone, and I say, what is the glory of this phone? You have to tell me all the features that make that phone expensive or makes it unique. So when the Bible says the believer should be the manifestation of the glory of God, it means the believer becomes a script, an explanation to how mighty God is. Are we together now? 
Men do not know God because they do not have the spirit of God in them. So you become a living epistle that when you walk with God, eventually you begin to become a kind of believer that becomes the most visible expression of all the multifaceted dimensions that make God God. His favor, his wisdom, his power, his grace. All of these attributes of God begin to find expression through you and it will cause the nations... To acknowledge him as Lord. This is the destiny of every believer. If you do not understand this, you cannot raise people. If you do not understand this, you will produce a weak people. Man of God, behind the pulpits that you stand in, every Sunday, every Wednesday, behind every conference such as this, it's important for us to know that we are in partnership with God over this agenda. To be able to bring the saints into their prophetic destiny that no matter where you meet them from you should never leave them that way god's desire is more than making you rich that's too small an agenda god's desire is more than just giving you a job it's important but it's too small an agenda these things are called his benefits there are six of them according to psalm 102 bless the lord O oh my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. But don't get so distracted with the benefits that you forget your destiny. The destiny of every believer. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Whether you are a man of God, whether you are in business, this revelation changed my life as an individual and as a man of God. Behind my raising people by the spirit, behind the things that I do, at the back of my mind is that I am in partnership with God to produce this agenda. That to birth the glory of God in the saints. Are we together? Very, very important. Your prophetic destiny in Christ. The Bible says in Romans 8 and verse 18. It says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. There is a glory to be revealed in us. There is a glory to be revealed in us. In fact, the Bible says, um, how does it put it now? It says, for our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, it worketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. There is a weight of glory. The manifestation of the power of God. John 15 and verse 8. Herein is my father glorified. When you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. John 15, 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, it says, and ordained you to go and bear fruit, and that your fruit will remain. Galatians 1, 24 profound sentence and they glorified God in me God can be glorified in a man God can be glorified through a man are we together now yes when Jesus walked upon the earth he walked as a revelation of who God was and who God is the invisible God that we never saw that we did not know now had a material frame was revealed to us in the person Jesus so all our suspicions and fears and doubts about God were clarified when Jesus walked upon the earth. He was a manifestation of the invisible God. And just like Jesus, the saints have been given the mandate to follow in his steps. That means we are to our world today a revelation of the invisible God. The God they cannot see. Hallelujah. Are we learning now? Say my destiny in Christ please shout it say my destiny in Christ is to be a manifestation of the glory of God on earth this is profound it will change your life immediately you know that beyond being a doctor beyond being an engineer beyond being a preacher beyond being whatever career whatever it is a family person that ultimately bigger than all of those things all those desires are subsets of this my life must become a glory a revelation of the glory of god that means one day someone should look at your life and say god i fear you this is what you can make out of men one day someone should look at your life and say indeed i know that there is a god in heaven 
Do you believe this? The believer has a destiny in Christ. And the destiny is that your life becomes a manifestation of the glory of God. The second thing that I want to tell you is that there is a pathway that leads to this expectation. In as much as it is God's desire that we become visible manifestations of his glory, there is a pathway that leads to that experience. There is a pathway that leads to that experience. My God, there is a pathway that leads to that experience. In John chapter 14 and verse 6, Jesus made a very profound statement. He now said, I am the way. Everyone say the way. I am the way. Not I have the way. Not I will show you the way. He says, I am the way and the truth and the life. When you really understand that statement, he was not talking about three different things. He was talking about a pathway. I am the way that leads you to truth, reality. And at the end of that journey, you encounter life. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So there is a pathway that leads to that. And it's important that you understand this pathway. Let me have three gentlemen, please. Any three gentlemen, just come up. Let me use you for an example. Any ones at all in front, come. We have three? That's all right. My friend, you can go back, huh? Just these three gentlemen. Do we have one more? Okay. You stand here, you stand here, and you stand here. Just space yourselves. Watch this now. Where is our third person? Come. You be the starting point. You can go up. Let him stand where you are. I like to teach giving an illustration. Now, everybody watch. Please turn, just face this way. Yes. Watch this. There are three levels. You need to understand this. Three major levels to the believer's experience. Number one, this for instance is a sinner who does not even know God. He's never met God. He just came for a conference like this or he came to your church as a man of God. But the destiny of that believer is to become like this person. If you do not understand the three phases that produces the glory of God out of a believer... You will keep teaching and teaching and teaching and people will never change. The first level is called salvation. Don't assume you understand what I'm saying. You just believe this. If you try to follow the path to the glory of God and you jump salvation, you will never get there. Hallelujah. As simple as this sounds, there are many, many believers. Give us First John chapter 5, please. 11 and 12 salvation so here is a gentleman who say perhaps came to church and then a great man of god after preaching made an altar call this gentleman perhaps naive in the things of the spirit are we together now but he made that call and he came jesus be my savior be my lord now he just began the journey jesus is called the key to the kingdom there is only one key to the kingdom it's not a metallic object, it's not a principle, it's not a law, it's a person, Jesus. But when you get into the kingdom, then there are the keys of the kingdom. Are we together? There is only one key to the kingdom. Jesus said, I am the door. So this gentleman gets saved. Now watch what happens. The moment this gentleman gets saved, for many believers, they think that is all. The average believer thinks his destiny is just to be saved no being saved is only entrance into the kingdom experience are we together it was never supposed to stop at the initial salvation experience because at this point there's a lot that is not yet at work in his life so when this gentleman gets saved watch this he does not just stay in that state a transition begins the second phase after salvation is called transformation transformation you need to know this for yourself and then to be able to produce a qualitative believer within your territory it's unfortunate that many times we leave many believers barely saved 
I hope you know that every sinner, according to scripture, is called a harvest. So in the mind of God, every sinner is already ripe for a harvest. What do you do when you harvest crops? Do you leave them in the farm there? When you harvest a tomato, especially perishables, if you harvest tomato and leaves it in the farm, what begins to happen? This is what happens. So when you have a church full of people that are just saved and are not changed, they will fill the church and eventually all kinds of troubles, manifestations of carnality begins to happen because they are only saved. Transformation has not happened. Transformation is the name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience. Transformation, the name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience. Is someone following? This is very important. You may have heard me say the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation. Every time you see an unbeliever around Asaba, every time you see an unbeliever around your area no matter what you give the person whether it's pocket money whether it's a job from an eternal perspective the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation are we together so if you give that person a job if that person receives a healing miracle if that person receives lifting all of those things are just um they are just consolations but you have really helped an unbeliever when you bring him to a point of accepting the lordship of jesus now the greatest need of a believer that is saved is transformation are we together now transformation 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 the process that makes you to become like christ in experience galatians chapter 4 and verse 19 please give it to us i need to walk you through this path my little children paul says of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. He's speaking to believers, people who are already saved, but he's saying there is a formation of Christ that needs to happen. The inner workings of the spirit, this is what produces the fruit of the spirit. Like you heard Dr. Ogweli was saying yesterday, the fruit of the spirit is not something that is mechanical. You don't try to have it. A fruit is a natural byproduct of the maturity of a tree. Are we together? When a tree grows well and it becomes matured, it does not struggle to produce fruit. Transformation and conformity. So this gentleman came to church, but he came from a background of idolatry, with all kinds of lusts and all kinds of anger, all kinds of jealousy, all kinds of things. But he saved truly. He gave his life to Christ and then through the ministry of the teaching priest according to Jeremiah 3 15 and I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart and they will feed you he says with knowledge and with understanding this is the raw material that turns this naive believer into a transformed believer knowledge and understanding the bridge between immaturity and to become a person of stature is knowledge, understanding. Is someone learning now? So with time, this our brother who started as a naive unbeliever full of all kinds of baggages, there is the work of the spirit. Every Sunday, every Wednesday, every message, every prayer session, every fasting session, every discipleship session, is transiting this gentleman gradually eventually he will become what we call a transformed believer a transformed believer what is the difference between this man and this man there is a greater experience of the character of christ when you look at this gentleman there is a striking difference you will almost not know again whether he's Igbo or yoruba or Hausa, or e European, or American. Do you know why? Because the limitations connected to his territory by reason of natural different descent has been eroded. He's been brought into a new culture. The only person he looks like now is Christ. The limitations that came with where he's coming from, the anger problems, the whatever it is, has been cut away 
the old man has been deadened he's been alive unto christ are we learning but you see when this gentleman gets here now he's learned the rudiments of the things of god then god lets him know that i have an assignment for you and that this assignment is not just for you to be a church member this assignment is for you to be a witness now that you have experienced me you need to help the world know who i am because your destiny is to be a manifestation of my glory but for that to happen if you only go with stories they will drive you away and so you move to the next level called empowerment are you seeing the order now so salvation then transformation if you try to do an empowerment for this man you are only going to waste anointing and waste time and this is a mistake that is made in church people receiving gifts without the character of christ and you see all the kinds of trouble that keep coming out of this because we compromise on the pathway look at the ratio of impartation to transformation three and a half years to one day of pentecost the, the disciples kept crying and said jesus wouldn't the anointing come on us we want to walk signs and wonders and he said no stay I'm making you to become a certain kind of people. They were only anointing conscious. They wanted anointing. When they saw Jesus healing the sick, they said, what manner of man is this? That the winds and the waves obey him. Give us this power too. And he said, no, not that way. You continue. At a point, they became angry. They said, listen, we've left everything to follow you. This bargain is not, we thought you would just give us anointing. And that mistake still happens in church today. There are people who the moment they get they get saved they run around with bottles of oil they run around harassing men holding their trousers i will not let you go you need to understand that the value of empowerment is when it comes upon a transformed vessel because the oil will always assume the shape of the vessel carrying it when the vessel was small it made the oil look small what was multiplied was not really the oil the moment the, the vessel expanded, the full potential of the oil was revealed. So there are some of you right now, God is doing a work. You are in this phase of your Christian experience. And while that is happening, the devil is deceiving you that the anointing will never come upon your life. You are what kind of man of God are you? By now you should have opened a church. By now you would have become a great man of God. No. The level of stamina it takes to represent God will be gotten in this your phase of transformation but then when you are truly transformed the next phase is empowerment empowerment when jesus walked with the disciples they got to a point where he told them now you've understood the message you need empowerment tarry ye in jerusalem don't just carry stories around you need to be able to be validators to be witnesses are we learning now any believer who follows these three phases will eventually become a mighty manifestation of the power of God. But the most important aspect, notice, this one, salvation happens instantly. Are we learning? Empowerment happens instantly. The one that is not instant is transformation. And that is the hardest of the process. Let me take it again salvation happens instantly you declare the lordship of jesus in that moment whether you feel like it or not you are saved when the power of god came upon elisha in that moment he began to work miracles but ladies and gentlemen the hardest journey of the believer is the journey from salvation to complete his process of transformation in truth we don't finish but that you attain a threshold that can leave you empowered let me tell you what is happening in church we are shifting this equation and changing it there are some hold my hands my friend this is empowerment some of us this is the equation we arranged so people who do not even know jesus just because there is an impartation i want power I want anointing to what end the men in Athens were bowing down and worshiping an unknown God is that in your Bible an unknown God 
they were worshipping an unknown God. And when Paul came, he saw them, he said, Ah, I perceive that you people have a lot of zeal. But all this worship and this service and this devotion, do you know the God that you are serving? Jesus told the woman at the well, he said, Ye worship what ye know not, but we worship what we know for salvation is of the Jews. Tonight for someone, God is rearranging it. That just because the anointing has not come on your life does not mean you are following the wrong path. You don't start with transformation. No. You start with salvation. There are many people who have jumped that step. They started with transformation. They have never truly been saved. But they've been around a church listening to a man of God. And so they have a semblance of decorum in their lives. And you will be mistaken that they are saved. They are not saved. The Bible says, For God so loved the world, John 3, 16. It says that he gave his then one and only begotten son, that whosoever, that blessing is for whosoever, believes in him, not whosoever comes around him, whosoever believeth on him, should not perish, it says, but have life everlasting. Verse 17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. First John chapter 5. Let's read 11 and 12. First John chapter 5. Please give it to us. And this is the record. Asaba, are we together? That God had given us eternal life. And this life is so structured that you must encounter his son. Verse 12. It says, So that he that had the son is the only one who had life and he that had not the son does not have his life remember what i'm teaching you that the believer's destiny is to be a manifestation of the glory of god and that to achieve that there are three major phases watch this the first phase is when you acknowledge the lordship of christ the gift that you receive here is the righteousness of god you do not earn it it is something that comes as a gift. The life of God as a gift. Watch this. We are not saved by good works. We are saved by grace. But we are saved unto good works. You see that now. There is nobody who can end salvation. For our righteousness is as filthy rags. It is important that as we help believers. We do not just start telling them. Oh, You, you don't pray and fast to be saved. You don't study the Bible to be saved. No, you believe in Jesus to be saved. When you are now saved, there are many things that happen to you when you are saved that were not in you when you were not saved. For instance, the anointing that is within, that comes by the Spirit, that is the anointing that makes you alive, desiring you, desiring God, placing the love of Jesus in your heart. Now that you have that measure of grace, are, are you seeing that now? The teaching priest in partnership with the word of God now leads you to a point of salvation, of transformation. You now begin to submit yourself to transformation. And as you are transformed, eventually, you will find out that you are becoming a certain kind of mysterious believer. And then a moment will come, you will encounter the power of the Holy Ghost. At that point, you have become a living epistle. God can show you to your world and you become a sign and a wonder. And men look at you and marvel and say, what kind of preacher are you? What kind of businessman are you? And if the person is interested, you can pass the person through the same phase. Are you seeing that it's not an exclusive reserve for some preachers? Everyone who passes through this phase, salvation, transformation, empowerment. Salvation, transformation, empowerment that is the apostolic model that was used by jesus to train the disciples and that was the model that they used to raise mighty men from the early church salvation transformation empowerment the greatest need of an unbeliever ladies and gentlemen every unbeliever in asaba no matter what you do to them if you do not bring them to the saving knowledge of Jesus, you really did not help them. The greatest need of a saved believer is not to remain a baby, but by the ministry of the teaching priest,
by the ministry of the word by the ministry of the spirit in partnership with all the spiritual exercises of fellowship and prayer according to acts chapter 2 and verse 42 and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayer that was a model Acts chapter 6 and verse 4 but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word now that person is sub submits to this process of transformation and then when you are transformed you can now begin to experience measures of God's power and even that empowerment does not just come it is not all the anointing you need in your life that comes at once it comes in measures according to Ezekiel 47 it comes in measures and that measure is controlled by number one the predeterminate counsel of God number two your level of faithfulness in using that which he has given you and number three your yieldedness to receive more these are the factors that govern the multiplication of the anointing I'm saying that because in the name of Jesus there is someone who came for this conference you may have started just with salvation but the Spirit of God has taken you through transformation to a measure and now you came for this conference because there is such an anointing there is a mighty grace that is going to rest upon you and it will turn you to become a sign and a wonder there are pastors that are transformed sincerely the missing ingredient in your ministry is empowerment just because oil came on your head does not mean you are anointed oil does not anoint the oil has to be anointed itself to anoint God does not hide his power in oil or mediums his power is hidden in his word his power is hidden in men it is men that anoint the mediums to be points of contact are we together let's celebrate this gentleman God bless you please if we are together say amen. amen I want you whilst you are seated to lay your hands on your head and now begin to cry unto God in one minute before we continue father I desire you know what face you are in right now for some you are not even saved I'll be giving you an opportunity before the service is done for some you are saved but the truth is that there is there is bankruptcy of grace of growth you have been around the things of church but not around the things of God there is a cry for transformation go ahead and pray and there are others in all fairness you have tasted of the transforming power of the spirit but your witness is not effective because you need to be empowered you need to be empowered you have tarried in this conference because the anointing for your destiny has been looking for you oh and may it find you tonight may it find you tonight may it find you that anointing that makes you a prophet indeed that anointing that makes you an apostle indeed that anointing that makes you a businessman indeed may it find you may it find you in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah now yesterday I understand Dr. Ogwele began to talk to you about the knowledge of God and he shared a few things and I just want to add a few things and then we'll pray it is important to know listen carefully I wrote here the riches and the full potential of the life of God is released only when we know God the riches and the full potential of the life of God is only released when we know God that means this Zoe life when the believer receives this life watch this now the life of God is a compendium of limitless possibilities but that the potentials in that life that you have received is only released to your world to the degree to which you know God Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32 the B part says but the people that do know their God two things will happen to them number one capacity they shall be strong 
Number two, they shall do exploits. Not talk exploits, not wish exploits, not explain exploits, not just write books about exploits. They shall do exploits. Hallelujah. John 17 and verse 3, Jesus is praying now and he says, And this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God. Are you seeing that now? That the administration of eternal life is beyond just confessing Jesus Christ. That opens you up to the potential of that life. But the experience of eternal life is a product of knowledge. That the deeper your knowledge of God, the more the reality of this life you have received is made manifest through you. You believe that? Say amen. amen. This is life eternal. That they may know thee the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. In fact, the Bible says, according as his divine power. It says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge, not of it, the knowledge of him. So grace and peace is multiplied to the degree to which you know him. You know him. The more you know him, the more you see grace. The more you see peace. The more you know him, the more you see grace. That means the difference between any two believers is not the love of God. It's the depth of their knowledge of God that has translated to the power that they command in their world. Did you get that now? Someone can tell the sick, be healed. You can speak over someone's destiny. Let doors be opened. And you find out that nothing happens. It's not that you are fake. It's just that you do not know God enough to have drawn the kind of strength required to produce that. Are we together? There is a reward for every encounter with God. It's like money. If I have 10,000, can I buy a house? No. But do I have money? Yes. But not enough for that kind of possibility. So if I stand to buy a house and I bring out 10,000, the owner of the house or whoever is selling it will say, this is too small. There are many of us, it's not like you are not anointed. But the capacity of God you need to make you reveal him to your world, you don't have it yet. So you stand before cases that are higher than your knowledge of God. And you say in the name of Jesus, let your destiny be open. And destiny is not open. Because every time you know God, there is a weight you carry in the spirit. And the realm of the spirit acknowledges it. He said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. This is what differentiates men in the spirit. The depth of their knowledge of God. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded, he says. Is someone learning now? This is the difference between any two preachers, believe me. This is the difference between any two kingdom businessmen. The depth of their knowledge of God. There is someone who can find something about God. The patriarchs find, found something about God. And it brought them, they were not even praying for power. When Moses, watch this, when Moses had an encounter with the glory of God, he never prayed that his face would shine. He never prayed for certain levels of wisdom. It was a byproduct. It is impossible to meet and know the God of the Bible and then remain the same. The people that do know their God, the preachers that do know their God, the apostles that do know their God. Are we together? The realm of the spirit has a very clear, unambiguous understanding of everyone's level of the knowledge of God because you see the Bible tells us God is many things like you'll be learning shortly I hope we're working together it says God is light that means every time you encounter God how they know in the spirit is that your illumination increases when Jesus transfigured he showed us his spirit man the brightness of light so every time I encounter God you grow in the spirit, not just by measuring chronological age. Your growth in the spirit is measured by the depth of light that is emitted from your spirit man, which is a product of the depth of your encounter with God. This is even how you can know the ranking of angels by the lights that they emit, which is a product of how many times they have the privilege of encountering God themselves. 
Is someone learning? So, when I encounter God as a man of God, there is a level of light, weight, and stature that I command in the spirit. That translates to the level of empowerment that rests upon my life. Let's talk a bit about knowing God. This is where I'll wrap up for tonight. Are you learning? <laughs> now the truth is that according to Isaiah 40 and verse 28, the Bible lets us know that God is limited and God is infinite. When we talk about the subject of knowing God, it said, has thou not known, has thou not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. Watch this. He fainted not, neither is he weary. Then he says, there is no searching of his understanding. You know what that means? In our quest to know God, even through eternity, we will never exhaust him. So he's already given you an information from the start that as you seek to know God, prepare to make it an eternal journey. There is no arrival. That you will never get to a point where you can quantize all of God and say, this is God. That was a mistake of Lucifer. He thought that all of God that he saw was all that there was to God. And he said, if this is all that God has, then I can be God. I can exalt myself like the most high. Only for him to find out that there are many dimensions in God that he did not know. Are we together now? The songwriter says, the more I know you, the more I want to know you. How true. When you encounter God, you will see that there are many layers to God. Now, so have this at the back of your mind. The second thing I want you to know, which is very important, is one of the major reasons why God is unfathomable is because of three attributes of God that he did not share with man. When the Bible calls us partakers of his divine nature, it is not every part of his divine nature we got. There are aspects of his divine nature that he did not share with man. Number one, his omnipresence. He did not share it with man. Man does not have omnipresence. Number two, his omnipotence, the ability to be all-powerful. Man is not all-powerful. We are not almighty. Our power is derived from our union with him. Outside of our union with him, we do not have power. Are we together? And then man is omnipresent, not omnipresent, not omnipotent, not omniscient, all-knowing. Paul already educated us that we see in part and we prophesy in part. That means the best of us is still limited in understanding. It is because of these three attributes. These are the attributes that brands God in a class all by himself. This one, he did not share with man. Omnipresence, omnipotence, and omniscience. Is someone learning now? So as we explore God, we are limited because we are not omnipresent, we are not omnipotent, we are not omniscient. But then the Lord gives us an opportunity to be able to discover layers, layers of the knowledge of him. So as far as our work on earth is concerned, there are three dimensions to knowing God. And this is what I want to give you tonight. I believe that this is one of the things that Dr. David Ogwele was attempting to bring yesterday. If you understand these three dimensions, you will know God rich enough to be a sign and a wonder on earth. Not rich enough to exhaust your passion for God, but rich enough to be a believer with the command of power and stature indeed. Are we together? I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see jesus lifted up you are exalted i receive i manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see jesus lifted up glorify I receive I manifest 
your power and your wisdom to my nation see Jesus lifted up exalted I receive I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up this song for someone will be your testimony it will become the anthem of your life that when men see you they will truly see the manifestation of the glory of God they will marvel and say can God make this kind of a man can God make this kind of a pastor can God make this kind of a prophet from what breed have you come these are men who have been forged out of the furnace of affliction men of power and men of might that men will look at you and you look like you are God upon the earth you will tame life like an animal because you have sustained power in the spirit he said leave me for the day breaketh and he said I will not let you go I will not let you go unless you bless me and say what is your name he said I am Jacob he said thou shalt no longer be called Jacob but Israel for as a prince you have had power with God and you have prevailed he touched the whole of his thigh and blessed him the Bible says the sun arose and he called the place Peniel for I have seen God face to face There are people who will rise from this conference tonight this night you are seated but you don't know what is already happening in your spirit man my goodness there are prophets that will rise there are deborahs that will rise there are catering coolmans that will rise it is time to not just talk about history that your altars in Asaba will be burning fire flames of fire flames of fire you go to church on Sunday and no devil can stand it's not just by acting and playing games you have become custodians of the things of the spirit God can trust you with the destinies of men you have access authority in the spirit receive manifest his power his wisdom receive manifest his power his wisdom listen can I tell you many people talk about wealth and prosperity and this is one of the things that has distracted people from loving Jesus you have not experienced prosperity yet until you walk this path with the spirit you will lay up gold as dust and it will be as if you went to meet a herbalist you believe me most of the people who move around is because they do not know God when God walks with you when he is done with you look at what he did with Solomon sit down let me give you this we have to wrap up I want you to write like your destiny depends on it Is it possible to know God? Yes. God again. In the quest to make us know him. Because knowing him is connected to our accessing power. Is connected to our faith working. Is connected to our doing exploits in our world. There are three dimensions to knowing God. And this will wrap up my teaching tonight. Are you ready? The first dimension in your quest to know God is that you must understand and know his nature and his character this is the first dimension whilst God is infinite there is no searching of the vastness of his person he has fragmented himself into three principal dimensions for our learning that every believer in this side of God's kingdom who desires to know God he's taking away the vagueness you can methodically he says let him that glory at glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me man can know God the first dimension to the knowledge of God is the knowledge of his nature 
and his character. Please write. The Bible is filled with experiences where God revealed his character. In Exodus chapter 33, 18 and 19. We have to be fast about this. Exodus 33, 18 and 19. Hallelujah. It was Moses who prayed a very sincere prayer. In the previous chapters before 18, he said, show me your way. Then when we get to verse 18, he says, I beseech thee, show me your glory. How did God answer that prayer? Verse 19. He says, I will make my goodness. Everybody say goodness. The goodness of God is an aspect of his glory. Do you know that this was the formula that was given to the nation of Israel? That every time their enemies came and it was sure that defeat was imminent, there was a chant that they made in the spirit. You are good and your mercy endures forever. They invoked his goodness and its mercy. And it's like two ingredients that when it lands upon the earth, victory must come even to the undeserving. The goodness of God. In Isaiah chapter 40, 28 to 30, Isaiah 40, 28 to 30, has thou not known, has thou not heard the everlasting God? Watch this now. The creator of the ends of the earth, he fainted not. This is, is giving you an understanding of the character of God. He is not weary. These things that are common with men do not happen with God. There is no such of his understanding. 29. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. 30. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. 31. Let's try 30, the next verse. But they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. Are you seeing now? God gives strength to people who are weary because he himself does not get weary. These are the things you need to know about God. The nature of God. The attributes of God. I think one of the most concise descriptions of God's nature was as revealed by the psalmist. When you read the entire text of Psalm 103, it is a profound revelation. The most concise capture of the various attributes of God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Verse 2. Let's run. And forget not his benefits and he lists six of those benefits number one verse three who forgiveth your iniquity who healeth all your diseases verse four who redeemeth your life from destruction who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies who satisfied your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles then when you read verse three it says the lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed so you can learn God by his character. You can learn God by the attributes, the things that he's doing. He made known his ways to Moses. His acts to the children of Israel. Uh -huh. The Lord is merciful. Say merciful. The Lord is gracious. Say gracious. The Lord is slow to anger. So if you come and meet me and say, Apostle, God is mad at you. And he says you will die tomorrow. I respect your prophecy, but then my understanding of the character of God, that God is slow to anger. There is enough time for me and God to do a discussion. There is enough time for me to repent, provided I am alive. The understanding of the nature of God takes away fear. I judge prophecy by the knowledge of the nature of God. Is someone learning now? This is what gives you stability and maturity in the spirit. If you do not know God, men who act in his stead can mislead you. When the prophet came and met Hezekiah, he said, Hezekiah, I brought you a word from the Lord. Put your house together, you will not recover from this sickness. He said, I respect you. I know you are a great prophet, but leave me and God. There is something I know about him. He turned his face and said, God, remember, I know that you are a merciful God and you tied your mercy to time so that every morning it is renewed like time. Where did you keep the mercy? And God said, suddenly, oh, th that was what blind Bartimeo knew. He said, thou son of David, if it is true, you are the son of David. If it's true, you are God, then mercy is connected to you. Have mercy on me. Is someone learning now? When you know God, fear leaves. Truly it does. The character of God. 
God is not just a judgmental God waiting to destroy everybody. The Bible says he knows our frame. He understands that we are weak. There is a healthy system of accommodation for our weakness in the economy of God with men. He knows. That's why the psalmist can go back to God and say, in sin and iniquity did my mother conceive me. Creating me a clean heart, he says, and renew a right spirit from within me. Do you know God that much? Do you know God that much? It is inconsistent with God's ways to judge you for the mistakes of others. The mistakes of your father and your father's father. You see that? There is a law that transgenerational iniquity can have an effect on people. But you see, when Jesus came, he revealed that that is not God's best. It is based on that knowledge you can cast that thing and say, whatever happened with my father, I don't have to be a victim. There is something about the nature of God that can bring me out of that. Who seen that this man was born? Was it him or his father? Jesus said, neither. But this has happened that the glory of God would be revealed. When you say you're a matured Christian, it's not just because of the time you have spent in church. These are the things that frame your spiritual stamina. You see that? So when you say, Apostle, God does not like you, you become a prayer request for me. I pray for you that God will bring you to a higher level of understanding. If God says he's going to bless 100 people here, I begin to pray for the remaining 99. Because one position is taken already. It says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Everlasting love. And with my loving, except you are not a Christian. You have to believe this. The world will bully you out of your confidence if you do not know God. We live in a world today where based on where you come from, who your father is or is not, the social media has their own system of pulling you out of your confidence complex will destroy you as a man of God you will travel across the globe and people will look at you and they will they will they will call you by all kinds of names but not when you know him not when you know him the greatest status any man can have on earth is to be the son of God it is a very superior status I may never have a chance to be called barrister I may never have a chance to be called president of a nation. I may never have a chance to be called the ambassador of a nation. I may not have any chance to be called his royal highness. But there is a status that is greater and higher than any sons of God. It says, now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be like. But the greatest revelation of the nature of God is found in 1 John 4, 7 to 12. Let's read together. Beloved, it says, let us love one another for the love, for love is of God. Watch this. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. And does what? So the ultimate measure of your knowledge of God is your love life, not enlightenment. The zenith of your transformation is the health of your love life not the level of your spiritual illumination there are many people who have access to mysteries but their love life is dead verse 8 he that loveth not knoweth not God read it he that loveth not knoweth not God why for God is love it's as simple as that so you love God but you hate the brethren something is wrong with that orientation the Bible says that the knowledge of God at its zenith connects you to his love that means the more I know God the more I grow in the things of God the more I find myself loving him and loving his creation there are men of God who only use their members they do not love them there are politicians who only use their people they do not love them do not tell me you know God. I will test your love life. There are people who wish the downfall of others. Wish the destruction of churches. 
wish the destruction of other people within the body no if you love jesus christ it is not in the greek and the hebrew and the rema and whatever the bible says he that does not love god does not know god your love life must be affected this is true how do i know you are growing in the spirit i don't just look at his power the highest index for measuring love greater than every other thing the bible begins to describe the qualities of love in first corinthians 13 and it talks about all of those things love is patient love is kind love is humble are you seeing now so when the bible lists the nine gifts of the spirit is actually one manifestation love expressed in those dimensions because he gives us perspective in first corinthians 13 he says love is kind so when he says the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace no he's saying from love comes all these expressions more love more power more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my life i want you to live with this revelation god is love that means the more of god i am becoming the more of love this is why i love my name do you know that's the meaning of my name selman means the way to love what a good name what a good name how do you carry such a name and hate people no I love Jesus with all my heart and believe me I love his people with all my heart that is why I would not manipulate them that is why I would not use them for gain I love them too much I would not come and lie and deceive them and play games with them instead of telling people stop stealing stop doing all of these things just bring people to the revelation of the love of God and there are things that when the love of God is at work in you it becomes evil to do to men are we together yes so i will not come and manipulate you and just prophesy and say bring out all your money and give me there's nothing wrong in giving don't get me wrong but from a standpoint of manipulation you do not love god i don't care what tongues you are speaking you do not love god hallelujah in all your prayer you must pray that the love of god in a higher dimension be shared abroad your heart by the holy ghost because when you love the Lord, do you know, I can stay all night. If this were all night, I would have taught you something about the nature of love. There are certain realms that only lovers get to. Even prayer warriors cannot get there. Even fasting giants cannot get there. If you actually touch that realm in the spirit, it's a love affair. The Bible says, no eye has seen. Is that in your Bible? No ear has heard. Neither has it come into the heart of man what God has in store, not for everybody, for them that love him. There is a level that you love the Lord to a point where you earn another status in the spirit called the friend of God. Not everyone is a friend of God. And when you attain that status in the spirit, part of the privileges that you enjoy is God will never do anything in a territory, in a dispensation and not tell you, shall I hide this? from my friend Abraham are we learning the nature and the character of God the result of this is confidence and freedom from fear not freedom to live carelessly not freedom to be licentious but freedom that he loves me and I'm aware that he loves me I'm aware that God loves me my goodness if you are looking for a man who is loved by God jealously loved this is one man standing before you I don't know about you but I know he loves me listen in marriage the confidence of every bride among other factors is principally derived from the awareness of the love of her husband towards her women am i right on that yes that when a woman is aware that her husband loves her so jealously 
there is a level of whether she's good enough or not whether she speaks well enough or not whether she's educated or not the greatest person whose love matters to her in the earth is her husband so if you as the bride of christ when you come into that knowledge of the depth of the love of that your husband because everybody is a bride in the spirit male or female you are called the bride of christ and the bible says jealousy is the rage of a man you want to see how powerful a man is touch the wife he loves not the wife he married the wife he loves so it is this awareness of god's love that gives me the confidence to know that yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death for me it's not a bible recitation is been motivated by our, an awareness of God's love for me. I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me, it says. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. There are times that as I travel around the world, God granted me that grace. Sometimes, truly speaking, people can send me text messages and say, Apostle, please, I just had a vision. I saw you in a ghastly motor accident. I saw something happening to you. Sometimes people reach me and say, Apostle, I want you to pray. I just saw that your name was taken to a shrine. And these are, these are genuine people. They are not just people talking nonsense. These are people who have a track record with God. I know they are not lying. But every time I want to fear, love does not give me a chance to fear. The confidence that I have, is it not in your Bible that he suffered no man to do them wrong? He reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. The consciousness of his character, his nature, it's been so engraved in my heart. It says, all that you have given me, I have kept and none is lost. When you give Jesus anything, including your life, he's a keeper. He keeps faithfully. But I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed. He only keeps that which is committed. I've handed over my life to him already. I don't intend to take it back. What then is the basis of my fear? In fact, for me, to live is Christ. And even if I die, it is still gain. I have cheated life already from both ends. When I pray for longevity, it's not out of fear. My eternity is secured already. It's only that I need time because of the program of God as an expression of my love for him, for giving his all. When I pray for longevity, it's not from a standpoint of fear. I have been secured in his love already. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the koinonia, the sharing together, the participation, the fellowship of the Spirit. Paul said, let it remain with you. Let the consciousness of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, let the consciousness of the love of God and the sharing, the participation, you have come into oneness with the Spirit. He says, let it dwell with you. Can I give you number two? What time do I have? We have to wrap up so that we'll come back. Hallelujah. I think I should just stop here. I will give you the remaining two. You are not afraid of going home late again. What suddenly happened to you? Take it down for me. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever love you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever follow you. I have sought you in the morning and I have learned to walk in your ways step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days step by step he'll lead you 
and you will follow him all of your days listen he can lead you out of these generational causes he can lead you out of the things that kept your father down you watch your father sincere but he went down your mother went down you watch preachers around your community go down if you can follow this good shepherd he can lead you he can lead you believe me step by step he leads me and I will follow you all of my days I refuse to be confused about life and destiny the one I gave my life to is a good shepherd he does not abandon his sheep even if it is in the night the Bible says while shepherds watch their flocks even by night he does not just take care of you in the day when times are good even by night when you are confused the good shepherd is still there watching his flock by night preacher hear me there is a way out of this ministerial calamity there is a way out of this financial crisis businessman hear me you are in debt but there is something about God you need to know going around just to keep collecting loan will compound your problems believe me there is a way out there is a way out Jesus said I am the way I am the door the door is the authorized access to any realm the door is the authorized access to any dimension so the dimension of wealth he is the door dimension of ministerial exploit he is the door oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you oh god you are my god and i will ever love you I will seek you in the morning. I have learned to walk in your ways. Step by step, you lead me. And I will follow you all of my days. Listen, Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden. He says, I will give you rest. That is his nature. He gives men rest. You cannot come to him and he leaves your life in trouble. Even if your boat is as boisterous, when he comes, he brings shalom, peace, calm to your life. I will be still and know you are God. My soul be still and know you are God. I will be still and know you are God. My soul be still and know you are God. I just sang my life for you. When I found the nature of God, it gave me rest. God is mighty. If he speaks, it is final. It is not just final because he is God. It is final because he is the only God. Hallelujah. I was teaching last week in Port Harcourt, I think he was. And one of the things I taught the people is that God does not have authority. God only gives authority. God cannot have authority. Because the nature of authority is that someone higher than you must give you. And there is no one higher than him he has all power but not authority if God has authority there are three things that happen the moment authority comes to you one you must acknowledge an authority higher than you a person higher than you two there is jurisdiction because with authority comes limitation so when you say God has authority then you need to tell us the jurisdiction of his power and who owns the rest are we together Jesus only had authority when he became a man and submitted to God but as God he has all power and no authority it is men that have both power and authority because authority is the legitimacy to use power if you have power alone your use of it is illegal you must have authority to be allowed to use power 
So if an armed robber has gun, he has power, but no authority. If a military man holds a gun, he has power and authority. That's why he does not go to jail for shooting. Demons have power, but they do not have authority. Only the believer was given both power and authority. <laughs> Hallelujah. So every time you stand to question Satan, don't question power, question authority. Question authority. Question authority. I have to stop here. Tomorrow we'll take the two other attributes of God and then we'll connect it to your theme. Because you see, you cannot desire that doors be open if you do not even know the one who holds the key of David. There is a mystery called the key of David. That is the key that opens a door that men cannot shut. He says, I am he that was dead and now is alive and I hold the keys. You know what that keys are? That when he opens a door, there are doors that when men open, men can shut. But when the holder of the key of David opens that door, he says, no man can shut it. When he opened the prison door, no man could shut it. Hallelujah. Yes. There are doors that men open and men can choose to shut it. But there are doors that when he opens, it remains. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. I want to encourage you. Do not miss any part of the sessions that are left. Because this is a build up of a thorough spiritual understanding. It will cost you to be a person of stature. We have examined the apostolic model for growth, for stature in the spirit. To have power with God. And I've revealed to you through that just one of the dimensions to knowing God. His character and his nature. I want you to turn it into prayer before I speak over your life. And say, Father, take away fear from my life. Take away uncertainty from my life. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal your character afresh to me. Go ahead and pray. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Go ahead and pray. Breathe, Lord. Breathe. Breathe, Lord. Breathe. Breathe upon my life. Will you breathe, Lord? Breathe. Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. You are praying now. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nation. Lifted up, exalted, I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. result of knowing God's nature and character is confidence and security confidence 
when you stand before the sick when you stand as a prophet and say things that have not happened and your life is at stake it is because you know who sent you if you do not know him don't stand before Pharaoh you will make a fool of yourself Moses said who shall I tell him has sent me and he said I am that I am we stand bold before the nations to declare his counsel we stand before the powers of darkness and we announce the exodus of God's people upon the understanding of his nature it is not because we are extraordinary in ourselves but we have found his integrity embedded in his character that God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent that he is all powerful and he's full of love and by this understanding everything that has kept you in fear hear me everything that has kept you limited everything that has refused to allow the God life the reality of the life and the power of the Christ to be made manifest in your life I command it to give way now in the name of Jesus Christ there are many of us listen these kinds of apostolic conferences should happen more frequently around the southeast do you know why because there will be men and women who can believe God to know that he has given them a mandate and the fear of money the fear of whether people will come dies when you know God none of you signed a paper to tell pastor Ike that you will come here it took his knowledge of God that built faith in him to be able to put this there are no guarantees in life your guarantee is God not men men are very emotional they vacillate they can promise you today and disappoint you tomorrow but those who trust in the Lord the Bible says they are like Mount Zion that can never be shaken but that it abided forever can I speak over your life father in the name of Jesus the grace that brings men into prophetic encounters I came to release that grace is one of the graces that I came to release upon someone because you need to have a very deep encounter with God there are two more dimensions and I will show you tomorrow but in the name of Jesus I pray for you from the depth of my heart let that anointing let that increasing that draws men into the Holy of Holies into the secret place he said blessed is the man whom God causes to approach him like he did Moses he prohibited the nation of Israel but he asked Moses to come and now by the blood he's open to us that new and living way therefore I decree and declare have supernatural encounters of the God kind some of you you go to bed tonight you will have angelic visitations visitations of the spirit the blueprint of your destiny will be revealed to you and the haziness around your Christian experience help those under the anointing in the name of Jesus the haziness around your Christian experience I command it to vanish tonight for some of you it will be unto you as it was help this woman in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 it says in the year that King Uzziah died I, Isaiah saw the Lord the grace to see may be released on you the grace to see let it be released upon you help them please let it be released upon you let it be released upon you that grace to see that grace to encounter God in the name of Jesus Christ One more prayer I see a dark shadow like a curtain resting on people's lives tomorrow we'll have the time to pray and minister but I need to do this since God revealed it to me just like a veil but it is shadow not a material veil and it's cast on people and because of this your mind has been blinded to spiritual things you are not able to understand you open the Bible and yet you cannot see anything some of you are preachers and you've been crying and say Lord open the eyes of my understanding I want to pray 
the assignment of the spirit of revelation is that your understanding becomes fruitful i pray for you help that man in the name of jesus that fail that has sat upon your mind in the spirit not allowing you to comprehend spiritual things i tear off that veil now please help them please help them whether you're an usher or not i tear off that veil now in the name of jesus hear me there are many of you who will start understanding things you did not study from tonight you will wake up and open the bible and see that illumination superior light from heaven because there is an urgency for the saints to become matured there is an urgency to attain stature in the spirit we cannot take the nations being weak in the spirit we need to be people of capacity and power therefore i pray for you all that it takes for your spirit man to be built may it rest upon you now may that engracing rest upon you now the bible says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us the lord is asking me to pray one last prayer my apologies for stretching you but i must pray it watch this you love the lord with all your heart but the lord is showing me that there are people there are all kinds of things that have held you bound addictions habits you want to serve the Lord acceptably, but there are things tying you down and it has kept you in fear. Will I go to hell? Can I live a victorious life? I want to minister to you in the name of Jesus, wherever you are, everything that God gives man, he gives man control and dominion over. The moment you cannot control it, that a spirit has come to manipulate you. Therefore, I declare every influence that keeps you bound, keeps your flesh bound, I declare be released now be released now the spirit of slumber gluttony lusts of every kind addictions of apparatus be released from it now be released from it now in the name of Jesus that you step into an authentic apostolic order of Christian experience in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. so let me make the request this night please tomorrow um, our teaching will also double as a miracle service I understand there's a morning session and a night session I'm sure Pastor Ike will come to speak on that but particularly for tomorrow night as I would usually do please I want you to invite everyone it's going to be a miracle service an impartation service there will be a release of graces as much as possible invite the servants of God to come God grants us this grace so that we can, there can be a sharing in the spirit. Are we together? It's not about who is bigger than who. It is a privilege for us to be distributors of these possibilities. Businessmen, invite them, captains of industry. And then may I request that you come with your requests. And you can also take that of your loved ones who may not be here anywhere across the world. You can write it down and come. We're going to be praying over it here. And to trust God for grace but there are some of you you have carried this presence tonight it will not leave you the work of the Spirit in you till tomorrow some of you may not even be able to sleep this night you will wake up and pray in a way that you have never prayed because there is an inner walking of the Spirit may the Lord bless you in Jesus mighty name we pray